right. It's another episode of Gearing Up. <laughs> Sorry if I sound spacey. I'm backing out of the driveway. I'm trying to try and pay attention. <laughs> oh man, how is everybody doing this morning? Hope you guys, or this afternoon, I mean just whenever you're listening to this, how you guys doing? Hope everybody's uh, week is going well. Hope you guys are good. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to it here. Um, yeah, uh, it is Monday, June fifteenth, two thousand and twenty. We are. I mean, this is pretty much like the halfway point for the year. We're halfway through the sixth month. Um, and God, it couldn't come any sooner. I mean, come on, let's uh, let's get to it. Hang on, I gotta I gotta tell April to uh, take the can to the end of the road. I'm running behind, otherwise I would do it. Uh, I see the trash truck though. Uh, anyways, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so let's let's talk. I I. I have been kind of spaced out the last few weeks, obviously, with the newborn, that's a thing, and, you know, that's, you know, we're still, we're still there, I haven't started yawning yet, but I promise you, it is coming, and I apologize for the road noise, I slacked a little bit on getting my tires rotated, so, um, I think they wore kind of uneven, and, and now they're, uh, they're just awful. Um, but when I get going on the road out here, it'll, it'll be better, so bear with me. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so what's going on? Let's talk. Um, I've got a few things coming up. I'm, 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 they're a little bit more complicated to put together than I, well, not complicated, that's a weird word to use. Um, but what's coming up for the podcast? So, uh, it is June, it is Pride Month, um, and I wanted to put together an episode, uh, celebrating some of the folks in the everyday carry community that are also part of the LGBTQ community. And I know, I I think I mentioned this in the last commute episode. Um, and I was going to try to do some interviews and piece them together, but between timing and how many people I found and all that, I just didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave anyone out. Um, and I also, it's just, life's been crazy. So it's hard to set aside time. Believe it or not, this is literally the best time for me to do the podcast is in my car because I can't be bothered with anything else. Um, so I'm putting that together and I'm just going to feature, I think I've got eight or 10 accounts, I don't, something like that. Um, and so that's coming up. Uh, I've also got a um, people of color, uh, black makers in the community, whatever you want to call it, um, episode coming up. So I've, I've kind of reached out to some of the accounts that I know, uh, and there's definitely some underrepresentation within the everyday carry community, which sucks. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I can to be thorough and make sure that I, I include as many people as possible. And, uh, I'm also reaching out to those accounts. I don't want to just shout them out if, if they don't want me to, or if they would rather me mention, you know, this or that, you know what I mean? So like, I say, you know what I mean? Like you're going to respond. Um, but now I, uh, so those, those are in the works. I'm, I'm putting them together as we speak. Um, I've got, I've got them pretty well built out and then some upcoming guests. I know a few of you guys have asked, Hey, who's coming up? Um, I've got a, a few, I've, I've got four lined up so far. Um, and I don't want to, I'm going to tease them a little bit, uh, but I mean, they're all, they're accounts that you guys should all follow or, or be following already. So, uh, I don't think it's going to be, you know, someone you've never heard of. Uh, so it'll be fun, but that's, that's what's going on, you know, and, and speaking of when the best time to do this is and all that, this may be, uh, kind of the new norm for a little while. Uh, I've got everything organized in the house and I could, I could do it, but you know, with, with everything, there's just not a great, great time. 
Oh, because our evenings are pretty stacked. Obviously, we get Foster to bed, and and then Parker eats and sleeps and eats and finally goes to bed, you know. So, um, this may be where I do a lot of the episodes for the next few weeks, um, minus the ones with guests. Uh, just because it's easier, I don't have to be quiet, I don't have to carve out 30 minutes, uh, which, you know, again, isn't a ton of time, but when I record in the house, there's, there's a lot more steps, um, plus the office is next to Foster's room, so I, you know, I'd have to be extra quiet, and I just, I'm not about that life right now, uh, I want to be able to talk, so, uh, you guys may get episodes from the car, uh, I moved the microphone, so last time I did this, I had it mounted up on my headliner, uh, and, I mean, it was fine, but I also found out the clip that I rigged up mounts right over my dash cluster, so it's literally, right, I'm talking right into it, so, I, I don't know, may, it may pick up more vibration this way, but it also may pick up my voice better this way, I, I don't know, so we're gonna, we're gonna see in post what this sounds like, and, we'll go from there, if we have to, if we have to bust out the Zoom and, and, uh, you know, use that to record in the car, then, I don't know, we'll figure something out, (laughs) um, yeah, so, I wanted to, let's get into the meat of, of what I wanted to talk about today, and that is kind of my quick thoughts, I'm, I'm not a reviewer, that's not really my thing, but I do like to share, some of what I, what I see and, and, and experience, so, um, recently I picked up a knife from my friends over at Finch Knife Co., um, and you guys know I, I really loved the Runtley. it was a really cool design, I'm a, I'm a fan of small knives, um, <clears throat> and so the Runtley kind of checked a bunch of boxes I liked, and it, and it kind of made me try some other things, you know, I'm not a big liner lock fan, I'm not a big flipper fan, um, but it was one that was really, really well done, so in that respect, it, it again, it kind of pushed me to, to try things and, you know, rethink, oh, well, maybe, maybe it isn't so bad to like this or that or whatever, you know, so, um, but they came out with one called the Tikuna, I, tic, I've been calling it the Tikuna, t- Tikuna, I don't know, something like that, uh, I'm gonna call it the Tikuna, because that's just kind of what comes out, but, um, it is similar in a lot of ways to the Runtley, just in terms of construction and design choices, um, or uh, maybe not design choices, but function choices, uh, and, 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 you know, if you closed your eyes and held it, held one in each hand, you could, you could probably assume they're made by the same company. They use, I believe, Best Tech manufactures their knives. I, I can't remember for sure. Um, but, you know, when I opened the box and, and was greeted with the band-aid that they include and their warranty card and all that stuff, it was very reminiscent of opening up the Runtley box and, um, you know, just the, 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 the fit and finish, the quality control, um, the action, everything felt very similar to the Runtley, so... Again, holding them side by side, you can absolutely tell they're made by the same company, um, and they're designed by the same maker. Um, so, it, it, you know, I, I, I love that. Um, I love that kind of consistency. I don't like people that kind of go off the walls. Um, but the Takuna is a slightly larger, it's it's not a large knife at all. Um, I want to say it's right at a three inch blade. It might even be a little less than that. Um but it's this sort of machete-designed blade, um, it's not a typical drop point, it's, it's, it's interesting, um, and, and, and the blade looks, uh, and almost feels bigger than it really is, which is kind of neat, I mean, it's, it's neat to have a knife that looks and feels really beefy, but doesn't take over your pocket, um, so huge shout out to that cool blade design, the handles, I think they nailed, uh, the rock texture, so I, I, I hate over-textured scales in terms of, not over-textured like grippy, but over tech like when they try to do the rock pattern, but it's like super deep and eh, um, but the G10 is per, I, I think it's perfectly executed, um, fit and finish, like I said, was great, it's on bearings, now, 
what I will say is, is with the Runtley and the Takuna, um, both were on bearings, and, and they weren't, they were smooth, uh, the action was smooth, it was snappy, detent was good, but they weren't the smooth, fluid bearing feel that you get from most knives on bearings. Um, and, and again, I don't know if it's a design choice, if it's because it's a liner lock, or if it's just... I, I don't know. Um, not to say that the action was bad in any way, because it wasn't. Um, the action was great. Uh, but it just... You could tell that there was some kind of resistance when it was flipping open. I, and again, it, it, I, I don't think it was any fault of manufacturing or any um, oversight. I think it's just... It's, it was just a, kind of a function of how um, those knives come together. So uh, it, it's not the smoothest bearing opening, uh, but it, it definitely was smooth and it was definitely snappy. And like I said, the detent was great. Um, again, it's a liner lock. Uh, it is it is a flipper. Um, and just like the Runtley, the flipper was this sort of carved back, really, really subdued flipper tab. Uh, with some great jimping on it, so, uh, deployment was easy, light switch, uh, push button, you know, whatever, how, however you, you like to flip your flippers, um, it was great for that, so, no complaints on the flipper tab, no complaints on the overall construction or action or anything like that, um, yeah, so, I mean, that, that was, that was it, I mean, you know, that's o overview, um, you know, as far as what I like, I mean, again, I like the design. I like that it looked and, and, and felt bigger than it really was. Uh, I love the, the texturing on the scales. I like that it's on bearings. I like that uh, they had, you know, the milled pocket clip that always kind of adds some premium to it. Uh, but let's talk about some things I didn't care for and why I probably won't be hanging on to it. So, um... Uh, I'm not a fan of coated blades, and never have been, never will be, and one of the things that concerned me about this one was the coating. I thought, um, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm a fan of the bug out coating. I'm not a fan. I, I, I'm okay with the, the coating on like a bug out, where it's that sort of matte finished, um, matte texture coating. Um, I, I think it wears nicely. I think when it's been used and it's it shows some marks, it looks good. Uh, the downside with the Takuna, when I got it out, the, the finish was kind of glossy. Um, and, and I I spoke with, I think it was Spencer I spoke with, it. he said, um, you know, that's that's something they went back and forth on. And it was something in the finishing process where they blasted the blade and then coated that kind of led to that glossier finish. Um, and again, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. This is 100% personal preference. But I wasn't a fan of the glossier uh, coating. To me, it kind of cheapens it a little bit, um, which, you know, again, uh, personal preference. I actually disassembled through it in the tumbler and kind of knocked it down a peg. And so when you look at mine, you can see kind of on the, the grind lines and stuff, it's worn down a little more. Um, I think it, it, it took it down enough and it softened it enough that it's it just looks like a really, really dark, heavy stone wash. So I'm, I'm a fan of it now. Um, but again, that was just something that kind of turned me off from the get-go. Um, and then the other the other kind of complaint, and again, this is a, a personal preference, but I wish the clip was reversible. And again, I talked to them, and I know they really pride themselves on their Finch logo. If you guys don't know, it's a Sapphire logo, um, and it does glow. And it's, it's, it's premium. I mean, it's a really nice inlaid logo in the... Uh, the G10 scales, and it's the same on the Runtley, um, and so I understand they would have had a reversible clip, it would have, you know, it would have, it would have gotten in the way of that, and I, and I get it, um, and repositioning would have kind of thrown off the balance in the knife, so I, I get it, um, I just, I, I carry back left pocket, because I'm a weirdo, um, and I, I usually flip my clip around, um, now the, the upside is, because of that really small, discreet flipper tab, uh, I, d I don't mind carrying it uh, back pocket again. So it, it, it's one of those things, again, it's personal preference. It's not something that's, that's a deal breaker for most people. Um, but that was just something that I experienced. So had to mention it. 
Um, overall, I mean, it's, it's good. I think my big reservations, you know, and again, I don't want to speak negatively of it because there wasn't a whole lot, uh, other than personal preference that I didn't care for. Um, with the Runtley, it was such a unique design and such a fun little tiny knife that it, it, it you know, sort of like the McBee, it was just kind of charming. And the Takuna, I think, it, it's a really sleek, really subdued uh, tactical design. And so, and I say that very carefully. Like, it's, it's, it is a very sleek, very subdued tactical. So it's not like a gas station tactical where it's got crazy angles and spider webs and weird things. You know, it's... it's it is it is a it is a tactical knife, but it is very well done, very well executed, um, and I'm glad I got to check it out. And I'm glad I got to experience it. I don't know that I'll hang on to it because it I, I didn't love it like I loved the Runtley. Um, I liked it a lot. I think it was really well done. I think if if you if the Runtley wasn't a design that spoke to you, but you want to check out something from Finch, which I highly recommend you do. They're great guys and they make great stuff. Um, I think the Takuna is probably for you. It's, it's, again, it's, it's not a jarring design. Um, it's very sleek, very subdued. And, and I, and I really, really like, uh, that machete inspired. I, I don't know what kind of, you know, blade shape you'd call it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's, again, I'm not a reviewer. Apologize if this is kind of wonky, but, uh, I think, okay there's one thing I left out. Let's talk about the price. I'm like <laughs> going through these mental notes right now. Um, it's a $150 knife. Uh, now for $150, there's a bunch of stuff you can get. That's not super inexpensive. It's also not ridiculous. I think for what you're getting and who you're supporting and you know, the, the unique design, I think it's worth it. I think 150 bucks is reasonable. I don't think they're asking for, um, anything crazy. It's 154 CM steel. So decent steel. Um, and uh, again, you guys know I'm not a steel snob. So if I say it's a decent steel and you're like, wow, that's a, that's a great steel. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> or if you're like, that's crap. Okay. You guys know I'm not a steel snob. I know that after I stonewashed it, I hit it on the KME and it sharpened up really nicely and took a really good edge. Um, so absolutely no complaints there, but for 150 bucks, you're getting, uh, a knife designed by some guys in, in the U S. Um, it's very well put together. Fit and finish is great. It's a flipper, but it's got a really discreet flipper tab. It's a unique design, but it's not so out there and so jarring that, um, it's going to turn, you know, most people off. I think it's, it's a really, really well executed knife. So for 150 bucks, I, I think it's worth it. Um, personally, um, I'm excited that these guys are still cranking out designs and I've seen some of the stuff on their website, uh, that they've got coming up and I'm really excited to check those out and continue supporting them. And I will continue supporting them. They've been nothing but cool to me. And, uh, again, just being able to, to check it out and carry it for a few days and, and really get a feel for it. Um, I found myself liking it, not loving it. So again, I don't, this is kind of a middle of the road review. I, I like it. I like the design. There's a lot I like about it. There's not a whole lot I don't like about it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm really, um, not as in love with it as, as I was with the Runley, if that makes sense. So yeah, there, you know, take it for what it's worth. If you guys want to check it out, I highly recommend, um, shout out to River's Edge Cutlery, REC. They, they, um, they carry it. I know, and it comes in like four colors, like black, blue, orange, and green, OD, maybe it's OD, um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend going and check them out, um, and I, I, I think they're selling some direct, so you can buy from them, or you can buy from River's Edge, I, it's not, it's not a sponsorship, nobody paid me to say this, nobody asked me to say this, I actually, um, talk to, to the guys at, at Finch and I gave them all this feedback, um, in, in this many words or maybe a little less. Uh, but you know, they, they knew my thoughts on it and they knew that I was, I was really stoked about how it came out and, 
and, and the, all of the highlights. Um, and they knew what I didn't care for. And that's, I, I like that they, um, took that feedback and, and were able to kind of discuss it with me. Um, and again, I, I just, I can't recommend it enough. I, I, I really, uh, suggest you guys go check them out, give them a follow. And, um, even if you can't, uh, support by buying a knife, support them by giving them a follow, um, and, and, and just checking out what they're, what they're putting out there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Those are my thoughts on the Finch knife coat Takuna. Um, I hope you guys uh, like that. If you guys want to hear more reviews, more thoughts, let me know. Uh, I've also thought about doing a video series in the car, doing reviews um, with my phone and the mic and all that. And maybe maybe that's something we can work on. Who knows? Uh, maybe I'll do that with my next one. But what else? What else is new? Um, I don't know. I mean, collection-wise... I really don't have any updates, um, I think last time we talked I had, uh, the, um, Thai Scribe in brass, the mini pen that was in, or coming in, so, I mean, it's, it's been amazing, it's been great, got rid of the Feldholter for it, um, so, yeah, that's it, uh, collection-wise I don't have anything crazy going on or anything new coming in, so, sorry to disappoint or bore you guys there, uh, but yeah, I mean, if there's anything you guys want me to talk about, anything you want updates on, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know, uh, I'm pulling into work now, so this has been a wonderful little commute, I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day, great rest of the week, whatever, uh, I will talk to you very soon, oh, there's the yards, and we'll get it there, I'm gonna... I'm going to wreck some coffee. Y'all better believe it. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for continuing to support. Be sure to subscribe, share this, share this on your story or with your friends or whatever. If you know somebody that likes everyday carry stuff or even if you don't, <laughs> um, and you, you, you know, somebody that likes podcasts, uh, be sure to shout it out. Uh, we appreciate the shares and all of that stuff. April will be back hopefully pretty soon, but um, in the meantime, you guys get to listen to my stupid voice, but, uh, I'm here at work. I'm going to go inside and, and get to it. So, uh, appreciate all the, uh, continued support. You guys have a great rest of your week and uh, we'll talk very soon. Peace.